Hey guys, Stephen here with Belt of Truth Ministries. I'm on the call with Dr. David Kyle Foster. He's the director of Mastering Life Ministries and the host of Pure Passion TV. David, thanks for joining us. Uh, what's the one piece of advice that you would give to somebody struggling with porn addiction? Well, the thing that set me free powerfully was uh, learning how to be intimate with God. Uh, when I first got saved, I had been a sex addict for over 20 years, uh, out of control, just totally out of control. And uh, when I got saved, I knew that there was no way that I was going to fix this. Um, I was doing things I didn't even want to be doing at that point. And I remember going to a pastor and saying, you know, I'm, I just got saved, but, you're, and, but I've been sleeping with two and three people a night for over 10 years, and you're going to tell me to stop, and I'm here to tell you I can't just stop. I, I don't know. It's overtaken me. And, uh, and he said, well, it's kind of good that you realize that you can't do it. Let's let Jesus do it for you. And, um, you know, I'd just gotten saved. Nobody told me what God couldn't do yet. And so I just believed, okay, if God will do that, that'd be great. Uh, so I, I, uh, I went with it and I prayed for God to set me free uh, from the power that, that I was under. Let's put it that way. I was out of control. And in fact, um, when I committed to not going back to those behaviors, the pornography, the sexual immorality, acting out on multiple levels, um, and I believed that God would come in and enable me, empower me not to do it. Um, it happened. It happened. Now, the temptations weren't taken away at all. <laughs> Wish that had happened. But the power to coerce me to act against my will was removed by God himself. And I knew right then and there that God had to be my partner in this because he had the power that I did not have. Um, I was filled with uh, what the Bible calls idolatry. I was just fixing on these images as some sort of hope for being completed or or covering up the pain of my life. And I knew that uh, God had to teach me a new way to deal with the issues behind my idolatry. And so I knelt before my bed every night and I prayed to the Lord and I said, Lord, I can't drive down Hollywood Boulevard without stopping at the porn store. That was my first prayer. And uh, he said to me, don't drown, drive down Hollywood Boulevard. And I, th I thought, of course, uh, why didn't I think of that? Um, so it was really rudimentary at first, the guidance that the Lord gave me about uh, fleeing immorality when I hadn't yet learned how to resist it with his power. And so it was rudimentary at the beginning, telling me uh, how to guard my life. And then he sent me off to seminary so that I could renew my mind with the Word of God. That was so, so important because... I had, beyond that one moment of faith, I had no faith really. Uh, I was actually angry at God, and a lot of addicts are angry at God. They've had a tragic life, or they've had some traumas or something in their life, and they don't think God really likes them. Uh, and so they don't like God. And so that's often right behind the rebellion that's going on, this, this anger at God, this disappointment with God, this sense that God doesn't really like God me or love me or that I'm some sort of a defect um, or I cross some line of sin and he will never come get me from this uh, from this these things I've been doing all of which are lies I, I, I soon discovered so the healing process for me was very much a matter of getting into an intimate relationship with the father and letting him open up the doors that I had shut in my own belief system um, discovering God as he really is, as opposed to who I thought he was. Let me give you an example of that. I was uh, committing a sin one night, masturbation, and the Lord spoke to me right in the middle. And it kind of shocked me because I thought God went out of the room when you did stuff like that. But he spoke to me and he said, David, if you'll turn to me right now, I'll love you and embrace you and forgive you. And I thought, no, uh, that can't be God. And um, I continued on. The second I was finished, the Lord spoke to me again with the same open, loving, grace-filled uh, words. David, if you turn to me right now, I will love you and I will forgive you and I will embrace you. And I thought, 
wow, Lord, I just told you to get lost. I just chose my pitiful little pleasure over the God of the universe. And you're standing there with the same love as before, as though I hadn't done that. And I said to myself, God, if that's what you're really like, I want to follow you. And in that moment of grace, this application of grace, uh, I went from following God because I was supposed to, to following him because I wanted to, because he was so much more beautiful than the pitiful pleasures I had been choosing. And I saw God from a whole different perspective as someone who was for me in, at every angle. And so I would pursue him every night. I would sing love songs to him. I would lay out my question of the night for him. Uh, most of the time I got no answers, I gotta be honest. But when I did get answers, it was when I was ready to do what the answer required, such as not driving down Hollywood Boulevard or whatever the answer might be at any given moment. And then the power of God poured out on my behalf. Um, I was singing love songs to the Lord one night and, um, you know, old vineyard worship music. And uh, I was having a wonderful time. And the Lord interrupted me and he said, you know, David, do you believe 2 Corinthians 3.18, which essentially says, as we gaze upon the glory of the Lord, we are transformed into his image. And I said, yes, Lord, I believe the Bible is the inerrant, infallible, authoritative word of God. <laughs> Feeling very proud of myself. And uh, he said, no, you don't. And I, and I thought, okay, I must not because he knows everything. So how, how don't I? And he said, well, why don't you worship me again? And this time, assume that it's literally happening. Assume that as you're gazing upon my glory in the spirit, I am literally transforming you into my image. And I said, okay, I'll do that. And so I began assuming it was actually true as I worshiped him. And then he began to show me that the things I was worshiping him for were the very things that he was transforming into me. So when I was uh, worshiping him for purity, I was receiving purity. When I was worshiping him for wisdom, I was receiving wisdom. This revolutionized uh, my thinking because I thought I believed when in fact, in many cases, I hadn't. And so as I delved more deeply into the intimacy with the Father, he began showing me things like this that were major keys in unlocking power for me to, to keep me from falling. You know, it says in Jude 24, he will keep us from falling. And uh, so as long as we keep this dependence on God, letting him provide the power, and then we cooperate with his direction. And just concentrate on falling in love with him. Concentrate on developing an intimate relationship with him. And then he'll lead you the rest of the way. That's the most important thing I've ever learned. Uh, yeah, I think that's great. That's spot on. Thanks for... Uh... Thanks for sharing that. Tell, uh, tell people where they can find out more about your ministry and, and what you're doing online. Sure. Uh, the ministry is at purepassion.us. And we have a TV show. It's been on the air for eight years. Uh, it's been on the air for eight years. And so we have over 200 episodes all on our website that you can watch for free. And we have them divided up by topic. So if you want to go to male sex addiction or you can go to female sex addiction pornography or whatever the topic you're interested in, and you can watch testimonies of dozens and dozens and dozens of people who have been set free from an addiction to pornography, and experts such as Dr. Stephen Arterburn and Jonathan Doherty and others who we have interviewed for the show. So that's, a, that's a, the great resource that we have. I've also written two books. The first one uh, is Sexual Healing. It's been out a long time now, but it's, it's like the book of my life. Uh, and it covers all the major areas of sexual brokenness. And it shows how they are similar in how they're caused and therefore how they're similar in how God sets us free from them. And then this last year, I published my autobiography. And it tells the story of me becoming a major sex addict um, and being out in Hollywood as an actor. And a lot of um, very interesting things happened to me. Uh, and then I got saved and... The second half of the book talks about all the most important things God has ever shown me in my life. It's called Love Hunger, and it's, um, it's online anywhere books are sold as well. Great. Well, we'll be sure to link to those in the show notes. Um, and yeah, thanks again for your time. Really appreciate all you're doing, and uh, good luck with your ministry. Thanks again, David. Thank you very much. Okay. See you.